All right. As we get things underway, I see Dom's coming in. We are already live on YouTube and our webinar is live too. So welcome everyone. There's four of us right now. Let me get my video started here. Welcome to the March 2021 parking committee meeting in Port Jefferson. And let me stop that screen share, yeah. although it is beautiful, right? It is so great to see. Thank you, Kevin. You're welcome. Take it away, Mr. Chairman. Well, thank you so much, Arch, for joining me. And I've got uh, Marianne. I don't see there. There she is. There's Marianne. I see you in there. And Kevin, thank you so much for organizing this here. You know, we do these parking committee meetings on a once a month basis. And what's great about it is the fact that we just kind of review some of the challenges that we have in Port Jeff and some of the opportunities that we have. And uh, there are many, many opportunities that we have. And now that the winter is kind of clearing our path of the way, and it seems like now with people being vaccinated, feeling a little bit more confidence, and now there are some buds coming on the trees, we are opening up ourselves and getting ready for what will be a wonderful, happy and healthy Port Jefferson adventure. So we've got a, a variety of things just to kind of run by and review, and uh, we can probably start. Uh, is there a place, Kevin, that you want to start with in particular? Yeah, yeah, I think, you know, I'll give uh, some usual updates. We don't have a big agenda today. Um, we will hear from Art, who uh, thankfully uh, um, let me know ahead of time. He's got an agenda item, and then I'll go over my items. But first, we'll have a guest, and I'm going to bring our Suffolk County legislator, Kara Hahn, into the picture right now, literally. <laughs> Kara, one, two, testing one, two. Here we go. I'm going to start on a personal note with Kara if she comes in, when she comes in. Hey, Kara. Hey. Hey. How are you doing? Thanks for joining us. I, 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 don't know if you, I don't know if you heard me. Welcome to the parking committee that's, I don't know, 10 years old at least, right, Dom? At least 10 years old, and uh, we're still... Uh, volunteering and trying to see if we can upgrade our level of parking in Port Jeff. All right. So just everybody knows we are live on our YouTube official Port Jefferson page. And of course, we're running a webinar. So we, we have some attendees I can see. But Kara, on a personal note, for the last six weeks, I'm watching you enjoy this beautiful place, Flax Pond, this bridge. So I <laughs> investigated, I found that I brought my dog there and I'm in love with it. And I don't even want to tell anybody about it because it's just so beautiful. <laughs> it's awesome. I run there several times a week, so. <laughs> phenomenal. Um, I, phenomenal I, 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 do, I do love to share it with people. You know, we, we have so many gems. Um, of, of course, unknown gems sometimes. I used to always go to that, again, on a personal note, to, from a boat. Oh, and, and this is the first time I've seen it from the land side. Got it. Um, I know they have the, um, you can ride the current. I don't know if you've ever yes. done that. Is that the spot you're talking about? Yep. That's okay. it. Okay, fantastic. So, Kara, I thought uh, I'd introduce you to the parking committee, which exists of everybody that's on the screen now. Uh, in addition, Trustee Kathy Ann Snaden and uh, Bruce Passarelli, a uh, business owner and a building owner uh, in Port Jefferson. So, if nothing else, just you may have questions of uh, what this committee stands for or what we're doing new in parking. And I, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that a big reason why Barnum parking lot was built was from a, uh, a generous grant to partially uh, help pay for that. And uh, I'm proud to say that will open. I, I'm, I'm trying to actually open it Friday um, for, you know, to, to get some employees to be incentivized to park there. So take it away, Kara. Uh, questions, comments, and then we'll uh, bring it out to questions. Yeah, no, I mean, obviously, you know, I've lived in the area all my life. Port Jeff has been a place, you know, I've come to since I was a young kid. Um, and parking can some I know very well, as you know, my office is there, and and I and I understand the parking problems. Um, maybe not as intimately as you all, but uh, certainly we want to help. And to that point, you know, um, Suffolk County has contributed grant dollars to Port Jeff, uh, you know, the mayor's grant writer. Um, um, shoot, why am Nicole I Christian. Yes, thank you, Nicole. You're welcome. <laughs> She's terrific. And, 
and Suffolk County Economic Development um, grants uh, have helped both at that location. You just mentioned Kevin and up by um, up by the railroad station, you know, but we can't pave over all of paradise. So, uh, you know, we have to have other creative solutions and I think it was a year and a half ago now, and I apologize, you know, COVID brain gets in the way of these things and a year and a half feels like five years ago uh, in many, in many ways, but um, Joe Cargiulo, mm -hmm. um, you know, reached out to me from Say Cheese, you, you probably all know him. And, wow. um, and we mm -hmm. did have a discussion, you know, I, I wanna say it was the fall of 2019 um, about our economic development um, and planning department helping just, you know, think through issues and how, how maybe the county can, you know, either help with a study or look at, look at what's being done in other villages around the country and try to come back with creative solutions. And you know, one thing happened, then another, and then COVID, and that kind of got lost. So, um, you know, when Kevin approached me, when was that last week? Two weeks two ago? Weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Two weeks ago. Thank you. I think it was two weeks ago tonight. <laughs> it could have been. Um, you know, I reached back out, and um, the, the staff members from Economic Development Department at the county who were with me in that meeting at Say Cheese, um, they are now working on COVID. So we briefed a new set of individuals on what, you know, I, or at least I did, I did. I briefed a new set of individuals from our economic development department on, you know, the kinds of things that have, you guys had worked on in the past and, and then, you know, just asking them to, to, do a search and kind of think about it in house and come back to me. Obviously they have not come back yet because I had the discussion with them. It was March 8th, you know, so it's just a couple of days ago, <laughs> but um, you know, I'm just hoping that maybe, maybe there's a way the County can help with some creative solutions. And if it's, you know, if there are other grants that they can think of, you know, helping to get, um, you know, I know they're hot on the, the Jitney thing. Um, I'm hot on the shared services idea. So, you know, really trying to look, uh, and, and then this is where I want to hear your feedback. Um, really trying to look at, at all the municipal and or other parking spaces that exist and maybe aren't in use, you know, AKA. Sure. The high school like you all already know or the elementary school or the church or the you know think about or the sewage treatment plant or the lipo plant and like think of all the existing space and and how can we utilize it all and share it all so that you know we don't have to keep building more spaces um but you know you may you may have thought that to death already and i don't know it so well, you know I yeah, I wanted to mention one piece of possible low-hanging fruit. We had a Jitney uh, program. We ended up yeah. changing the name of it to Shuttle. And it, yes. it, it was the Stony Brook Shuttle. And it, it was starting to be very quite successful. And then we all know what hit. Uh, we funded that. We funded that with the bid the second or third semester. Um, and it, it became, you know, it was expensive, but we, we kind of looked at it like it was saving, and it was saving parking spaces. Those students and faculty were coming to town and not using a parking space, and that was good. It was a good program. But we also knew that there were Suffolk County buses that were literally going from Port Jeff to Stony Brook. Now, were they stopping at the university? I don't know. They're stop, um, they stop at the um, train station, the railroad station, Stony Brook Railroad. Oh, okay. I think it's 76, I want to say. Um, yep. um, I just want to read this note. E Does anybody uh, know about this uh, EDP? That Suffolk EDP is here? That's on your side, uh, Cameron? Anybody know about that? Uh, you mean... Why, why don't you ask... Uh, check the chat, Dom. Just talk to that person there because I'm not quite sure what that, what that chat is. I want to make sure it's uh, applicable to our meeting. 
so Kara, going forward, there might be some low hanging fruit here where we can reinstitute mo mobility from Stony Brook to Port Jefferson in a line, in a bus that might be already being used rather than uh, what we did do, which is uh, recommission a dedicated bus, a shuttle, if you will, came in at an expense. Well, maybe is uh, that Jonathan? Jonathan Keys, is that you? Was, yeah, no, Jonathan you? wasn't involved in the one we were speaking about, but he certainly would be in the future. No, I'm wondering if that's. Who, oh, yes. yeah, maybe it is. That's, that's who, it is. yes. <laughs> that, is Jonathan. that is Jonathan. Yes, Jonathan. Jonathan, I see you. Okay. Great. Do we want to bring Jonathan in? Yeah. We probably, we probably should. Thank okay, you. Jonathan. I I didn't you know, know you were Kevin, coming. <laughs> Kevin, Kevin, yeah. I don't want I don't mean to interrupt, but Bruce doesn't have a phone number. If you could text it to him so he can get into the meeting. Can you do that, Tom? Uh, Bruce doesn't have a phone number of this here. Yeah, he said he didn't have the phone number to get into the meeting. And I'm looking for it. I can't find it either. Hey, Jonathan. Hey, I'm sorry to crash. <laughs> I, I yeah, that, that was me, Kevin. I am. Um, I'm sorry. I'm jumping in late. I am. Um, I'm on. Uh, some double duty at home tonight. I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to stay, but but I okay. did want to let you know that Alex Wallach is on as well. Um, so I just really just wanted to make us ourselves available to the discussion. Turn that way um, in terms of uh, questions or anything uh, like that. Yeah. So I just Excellent. I don't know if you heard me give the little briefing um, about our meeting uh, with yeah. John, and I didn't mention your names. You know something? I apologize. I didn't realize Jonathan and Alex would be on this. So I really appreciate you even nope. just. And, and we are happy to hang in the background. I just, like I said, just no, it's good. Know it's all here. good. All I mean, good. Be I because when we talk about uh, parking uh, these days, we do talk about parking and mobility. So it is good that you're here. And uh, as you know, I just met with the uh, the bicycle uh, folks, Chris Diamond, and we, 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 we took them around town and everything else. So it's all good. Yeah, no, absolutely. We are excited for bicycle, you know, increased bicycle usage any way that folks can get into town, you know, the, the shuttle, um, the, what was the other thing called that um, was just within, with village residents and it would bring people down into town. Um, what did you call that? Oh, gosh. Really uh, uh, the shuttle or the jitney? No, somebody else said it. Um, Not sure, but I did want to say just, it was just for I thought it was just for village residents and it was um, it, it would co pick people up anywhere in the village. That, that was them. called the Jitney and we right. we recommissioned that as a shuttle. Got it. Got yep. it. Okay. That I worked that worked for years. I just want to mention that the number for Bruce to call in is now on the chat screen. If somebody wants to text that to him, Great. Thank you. the New York number would be fine. So, Jonathan, what I started to say was just maybe there's a possibility of some low-hanging fruit getting back into mobility from Stony Brook to Port Jefferson. Uh, I think we made a proper decision in leasing a service and not buying another $65,000 bus. So I'm, so I'm really, really glad I actually pushed to not buy a bus, and I'm really glad I did. Now that I look back at it, we would have been sitting with a bus in a parking lot, and that would not have been good. So we were able to... Uh, immediately cut that off when COVID hit. That being said, Suffolk County has buses running all day long. Uh, doesn't have to be for this conversation, but I thought that was one piece of the low hanging fruit. And then the other question I have to put out to Kara, is there any Suffolk County owned parking lots in, in the Port Jeff Village? I don't think there is, right? Well, so this is where, where I asked Jonathan about, you know, are there spots at the sewer treatment plant? I don't think there are a lot. Um, I, you know, if it's a handful and that's why I asked about municipal, all the other municipal type spots, I think. So what I'm hoping EDP is working on is, you know, trying to get some kind of inventory of, of parking spaces, who's there, whose they are. And you may have already done, the village may have already done something like that. And if you want to share it with our DDP, you know, we have a shared services charge. Um, it's separate. I think it's separate from EDP, but it's under John Kamen, deputy county executive that, that works to get villages, towns, um, you know, county school districts, fire departments, you know, mm -hmm. get them to share purchasing, get them to share equipment, get them to share, you know, resources. And so just my thought was, 
you know, I don't have a good sense. You may all already know it and say, Kara, there's nothing there. We've, we've squeezed that, you know, lemon and it's dry. But, uh, you know, I just know that the school, you know, the high school's there. There's a, an elementary school. There's a, you know, a, a private, there's the Catholic school. There's churches. There's all kinds of like lots that exist. And I didn't know if there were ways to share them mm -hmm. sure. during high, you, you know, during some of the moments when we really need them. So you may have already, you may have already done all that outreach and this is the time to tell us not to go, you know, don't go down that path. We've been there, done that. But okay. um, yeah. I liked the valet idea, you know, and uh, you guys should tell me, tell me more about why that stopped. Was it just COVID or was it, you know, it just wasn't working. Okay. Carol, let me, let me see if I, uh, if I can give you a little, a little briefing here. Yeah. Uh, I'm Dom Famularo. I've been on this committee for over 10 years, uh, mm -hmm. and, um, have learned more about parking than actually in my life. I care to know. <laughs> okay. So in my profession, I travel globally and I traveled to, you know, before COVID, 10 to 15 countries a year. So I've been able to do a study in my travels for my business to see what's happening with parking. The mentality in Europe is a much healthier mentality to have access to parking further away and walking to a place. In America, we have a very myopic concept of if it's not convenient for me to step out of my car and walk into my restaurant or my store, I'm going to complain. So the first thing we have is we have a, 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 a mentality challenge here in America. It's not just in Port Jeff. Second thing is, yes, we have squeezed the lemon. It doesn't even look like a lemon anymore. Okay. It's, it's, it's been so, we have squeezed every space. We have walked through this village and we, if we walk through an area that had a place for one car, we tried to negotiate to make that a one car space if we could. So we have squeezed. Barnum was the last lot. We literally had to purchase a home and, and demolish it to get the space. The negotiation yes. then to get that land the way it is was amazing. The outreach land, you mentioned the high school. Yes, the high school in the upper part of the area has a teacher lot. Yes. It's not used a lot. The challenge is people, again, don't want to walk and yeah. walk. So the shuttle idea, which Kevin had brilliantly put together, was a great convenience. It started working out. We still have that challenge of people want the convenience. The other part of the inconvenience that we well, have. Well, that's why I thought the valet was such a great idea. I'll get to the, I'll get to the valet in a moment. Okay. The, other, the other challenge that I just want to speak about, the mental issues. The other challenge we have are employees. We have 300 employee cars. All the employees want to park directly in front of where they work. The disrespect we have for their customers is unending. And unless the owners of these facilities tell their workers to park further away so our customers have better facility, there's nothing we can do with that. So a part of the challenge is we need to gather the restaurants and the businesses to let them see the immediacy of getting their employees to use the Barnum lot, to use maybe the teacher lot, and we'll shuttle them from the upper school, high school, down to their work. If there's that that ability of doing it. The next thing is we have BOCES. The BOCES building has got parking that is there that is just empty. It's just a fenced in lot of parking spaces that nobody uses. So in a town of Port Jefferson that needs to have a facility. So the negotiation with BOCES, if that could be used, if we could even use that space, and meter it and why share am I the, why am I not picturing where that is? Where where's Bosey's? What, what what street is that on, guys? It, are you talking about halfway up the hill? It's the old junior high school. Okay. I don't know the street. Art, do you know it, Marianne? Anyone? No. Up, um, is that on High Street in Tuttle Street? Yeah, I think it is high. Thank yes. you so much. That's High Street. Thank you so much, uh, Alex. So that building. So again, if we maybe were that's to... maybe that's the one I keep referring to as the elementary school. But okay, so if we were <laughs> able to even if we even came to negotiating, metering it, and sharing the funds, we're open for that. Yeah, so, yeah. So I think these these are the things you know. I want. I I feel like we need people just to be 
open to. Um, Tara, we are open to it and we have discussed this relentlessly. So if someone else can come aboard that can help with negotiations to open up those. I items. will reach out to BOCES, that's for and, sure. Okay, the, the next thing is the shuttle. The shuttle, we, we literally put in bus shuttle stop coverings that we invested in that work fantastic sunshine or rain they can stand the shuttle comes in picks them up they'll take them anywhere around we can loop this shuttle around we can make that work now let's go back to but the how valley. often how often can it loop and where did it loop we it had a schedule it. kevin can give you a schedule we had the schedule or mapped out on a brochure it looped every 15 minutes so it was right. as convenient as we could possibly make it okay so that was it now the next thing is valet the valet was a challenge for the fact that we have really no place to valet the cars conveniently to bring cars in and bring cars out. We talked about in Trader's Cove. Again, the valet people didn't feel comfortable with that. So the valet companies that have come here, we've had three or four of them come by here. When they look at Port Jeff, it doesn't seem to be a good fit for valet parking because we can't safely bring a car in, get someone out, and then drive that car and park it someplace to come back in. There isn't a good in and out area to make that happen. So that's unfortunately how, so the Valley, we well, tried some, it. Some history. That's, yeah, we, that, that's what we're doing here. We're just giving some history yeah. and then, and then going forward with possibilities. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. No, I'm trying to, I'm just trying to, I'm trying yeah. to think in my head. <laughs> so the good, the good news here is we think that the Barnum lot, which literally is the first, what I call outer ring lot in 50 years, right? Just that little stretch across Barnum makes it an outer ring lot. And what we've decided to do is make it no charge to park there, hopefully starting this Friday. Um, that won't matter too much because it's no charge anywhere right now. Where it will matter is when we start to meter, which is only a couple of weeks away, we will incentivize that word that human beings like, not just telling them you should park here, but incentivizing them to park there, uh, I think will work quite well. And I think our biggest challenge is going to be we only have 46 spots. And but even, I think it'll work. Even the spots in Caroline, uh, you know, where there's about, I think, 35 spots there, Kevin, that are free. Uh, Caroline field. On the other side of the field? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I believe there's nothing now because of the construction. If that's what you're making reference to, or are you talking about the side of the road? The, the side of the road. Where we yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll count it. I think I think it's less than 30, but I know what you're saying. Yep. My point is we had we had 30 spots there, and the object was to tell the employees to park there free, free, free. Now, if they're making $10 an hour and they're paying you know a, part, a major part of their salary for parking because they want to park close, they can park there free and walk from Caroline Street to the, they don't want to do and, and, and some did, some did, but I will say this, um, you know, you walk past those woods, that park, there could have been a little scary little aspect to that. No longer the case. Understood. So now with Barnum Lot, with Correct. the lighting and the clarity of how it looks. Correct. If we can drive those employees. So imagine 250 to 300 cars during busy season are employees. If they're in the fundamental main spots with the customers, that's going to affect parking. That's a problem. Yeah. That's our major. So, and I don't like the word problem. That's why I use the word challenge. It is a challenge that we've had in this village. The village is in a bowl. We're in the lower yep. part with hills around us. Yep. So our environmental structure is not really conducive for a great parking. Now, we also have the municipal lot, Brookhaven municipal lot. You know, that could be something that could be used even more. And now behind the old gap, we've got that. Yeah, lot I, I still don't understand the, the portion of the Brookhaven lot that's where, where the boats go in, like, so where the boat ramp is. I feel like there's a huge there is. space there, right? There is a and, huge yeah. unused space, most of the time unused. Yep. Alex, you and might be able to speak it, about that, but I mean, that's a portion to trailers and boats and Brookhaven owns. Right. But, but on a Friday night, I know on a Saturday night, like, is there a way to, like you said, you know, maybe share a meter resource, if we can, you know, something? If we, or? Can, if we can re 
strip that and put in easily 35 spots there and meter that and then share that with Brookhaven where we're going to cut them a check every month or so. I, you know, that would be a, you know, that's a probably a politically negotiating nightmare, but if that was to happen, that would be another, another help. Well, well, so uh, forgive me because I don't try to park there. So, so what, like what would happen if somebody drived up there on a Friday night and parked their car? That's a good question, it's, and it's a it's a bigger it's not question. Like boats are, it's not like those trailers and the boats are, I mean, it's not full with trailers and boats, right? Like, I'm trying to picture it. I don't walk Paris, some, over some there people, often. Some people do that already, and they park the car there, okay. and nothing happens to them, but we cannot tell people to do that. It is, right. it is not, uh, legally, we can't tell people to do that. Right, so the problem is, so the problem is, those spots have to be ready for boat trailers when people are in the water, boats are in the water. So summertime, you know, daytime summertime, that's probably like a no, no. Right. But, but there must come a certain point in the day <laughs> where, you know, it's mostly not used. And it, I, you know, if there was some way that it, you know, it could it could just have that shared use. You know, that's something for our EDP to think about. <laughs> Tara, again, that is a that the the challenge is that even during the summer when the boat trailers are there, there is still enough space for twenty plus cars to go. Okay, in. that's what I didn't realize. Good. Even okay, with, even with the with the trailers and because the trailer uh, lining is, if we go back against the fence of Beach Street, there's easily 20 spaces we can get in there but it has been a challenge in negotiating and now with the new restaurant opening up that's going to be happening there too that's going to bring more business in there'll be more cars coming in looking for more spaces to park right and so the other part of this conversation and maybe next month's guest is somebody from brookhaven by the way but the other part of this conversation is brookhaven maybe even this season is for the first time starting to meter the lot we're talking about yeah so oh, I think uh, they're, meter they're metering the um, the town lot. Yep. Oh, that other than town residents, my understanding on the meters was that right. So, if you're a town resident, you don't pay the meter, but you if pay. you're not, you can. Correct. Kevin, do you know their rate? Do you know the rate they're going at? I don't. I don't. I'm not familiar with, with how this lot operates, but that sounds like that's something we may be able to talk to the town of Brookhaven about. And I know the way the, the spaces are laid out there for trailers um, so, could fit multiple so cars. You should know there, there was a very high... Oh, my, uh... Somebody else, your chew bomb. Um, so you should know, Alex, that there was a very hotly contested, controversial proposal put out a couple of years ago that the town of Brookhaven was going to, was it sell the lot to Port Jefferson or what? I, can't, I don't even remember, but residents went nuts because town of Brookhaven residents want to be able to come to Port Jefferson and park with their town of Brookhaven it sticker. sticker when went nuts. So when it was, I more, it was more the boating the aspect, aspect, the boating aspect, aspect too. too. Well, well, me, me as, as a Brookhaven resident, resident, I, I like, like to think that. that I'm getting an echo. I'm sorry. Um, so, anyway, so we have to be very careful not to mix the two. <laughs> you know, um, that would be that that could cause a big problem for a whole host of, you know, other residents around Port Jeff Village that like to be able to come to Port Jeff Village and have a place to park, which they've already paid for because we pay extra for our town of Brookhaven sticker. And that's one of the, you know, West Meadow Beach, um, Port Jeff lot, Cedar Beach, you know, the town of Brookhaven sticker that you pay for gets you those. And if they take that away, um, there were a whole slew of, of residents from all over Brookhaven town that, that had a problem with that. So the town, it, when we approach them and hopefully we can approach them together about the 
boat um, trailer lot, we'll call it, next to what is that that new restaurant going to be called across from the shipyard? I know I saw it. Someone posted it, but I can't remember. Um, is that the Port Jeff Harbor Club? Or Port, is Jeff, that, Port yeah. Jeff Harbor Club, yep. Okay. And so, so it's around that, and it's a very large space, and I've always... You know, I always drive by it and think to myself, I don't understand what's going on there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tara, that, that's another option. If you guys can look yeah. into it and, and, and open that negotiation, that would be great. You know, so we BOCES, the, that Brookhaven boat trailer lot, um, and then any other, you know. We have, we have the high school, like we mentioned. Yes. Okay. Now, the CVS lot is also a lot that we have, um, I believe, Kevin, we have about 30 spaces in there that have been allotted to us. Um, I, yes. I, I, <laughs> yeah, I, I think around 30 spaces. Now the challenge again with that, and I will not use the word problem, the challenge is employees and people have said to park there, then they have to walk into the town. So that walk is a healthy, on a wonderful spring and summer day, is a healthy walk into the village, it's not a long walk. So if someone complains about that, it is the mentality that we're dealing with that is the greatest challenge. Yeah, I know, and I, I get it. I mean, I know I need my spot next to my office. <laughs> <laughs> I just gave you a merchant pass today. I don't know if you know that. <laughs> Believe it or not, if you could park back in the Barnum lot, and then walk to your office. Yeah, I mean, look. That I, would send the right message. Absolutely. Um, I haven't, I've been working from my home <laughs> because of COVID. Um, you know, I don't want to crowd my office staff. You know, we want to have as you know, few people as possible in the office. So I've mostly been working. I haven't, you know, obviously, during COVID, it's not a problem, but I've mostly been working from home um, with my own co comorbidity. You know, COVID has been very frightening to me. Um, and we, I think we're all trying to do that part. Um, but as we come back, you know, each, each employee has different needs. So, most, I would imagine a lot of employees, they come to work, they park, and then they leave at the end of the day. Uh, there are some employees, though, who may be like me, where they have four different meetings and they come and they go several times a day. And that walk, um, while once a day may be a 10 minute total, um, if it's a three or four trip thing, it causes a problem. So, you know, every employee Carrie, is going to be different. But Carrie, your, your situation is yeah. unique, and I understand that. Yeah. An employee who's no, no, no. I'm, yes, I'm an just employer, saying. An employee, yeah. So, what we need is someone who wants to put together a restaurant committee and meet with the restaurant people to convince the restaurant owners to come up with some kind of a an incentive program. Well, aren't they employers. complaining about the parking situation? They are. And what I'm saying is if the employers could put together an incentive program so their employees could save money by parking a little further away and the customers can have a better place. Yes, when a restaurant company comes and complains about parking, after 10 years, I'm burnt. Yeah. I'm burnt. Listen, you've got 15 employees that are parking in your front spaces, and you're going to come and tell us you need more parking in a town that you, you can't, we can't think that way. Do we need term limits for this parking committee? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys, it's, it's very interesting to work in this year because if we keep on hearing the same challenges year after year, it means we're not moving forward. Right. Moving forward, so please. what about what about the bike share? Um, you know, I mean, I know it's hard. Challenging. This town is very challenging. It, but, and it I'm, happen. It I'm a happen bike proponent. With the hills that we have and the tightness that they have with the village. Well, no, I'm even thinking, you know, from Barnum, you know, in, you know, so that people could come and go with bikes to the to the outer ring lots. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but then you have to they wind up in one place and you got to get them back to where they're needed. And, and that does become. Well, the bike company will do that. The bike, and we, we didn't totally let it go, but yeah. we did recognize that the town itself is a walkable, the village itself is a walkable village. And to be blunt, just not at this point, bike friendly. That's, that's just the case right now. 
There's not much in Suffolk County that is. I guess not, except the beautiful trail we talked about. I love that. Yes. The 15 <laughs> miles or whatever it is. Uh, I wanted to give... Art, uh, Art has his hand up. Yep. Uh, Art, just before, I just want to say Bruce, one of our one of our um, uh, members is is on. Bruce, if you wanted to talk, you would unmute. I cannot unmute you. And uh, Kathy Ann's still not here. Okay, go ahead, Art. With regards to bikes, uh, there are people who set out in groups of like 20 and do like 50 mile bike paths along Long Island, and they do come into the village. Yes. Oh, yeah. We, yeah, no, no, no. Trust me, there are people willing to risk their life for the thrill of the, <laughs> the bicycle ride. And I've been um, advocating for them with three foot law and the, you know, roadway safety laws um, that we're trying to pass. But there's no question there are people willing to do it. Um, I guess to Kevin's point was, you know, how, how, sa how safe is it? There's a lot, you know, there's a lot of car traffic, people circling to find spots. Yeah. <laughs> I have one other question. I know uh, in Governor Cuomo's state of the state, he allocated substantial funds for infrastructure. Uh, was it with 300 million? Would you know how much would be allocated to Suffolk County and how much of that is already spoken for? I do not. I do not know how much was allocated to Suffolk County. I can look that up though and get back to you for sure. Um, sometimes things get announced, like proposals are announced in the state of the state and um, then it has to be passed by the legislature. And I know that they work on their budgets due April 1st. Um, so that might've been a proposal he made, but I'm not certain. And I, maybe Alex, do you know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know off the top of my head. We'd have to check with our, our, our yeah, interview folks. All right, fantastic. I just wanted to open up to anybody that's uh, watching or an attendee. Uh, Kara is, is uh, a guest tonight and not normally on this meeting, so we appreciate that. Uh, if anybody has a question, comment, do that at this time. Raise your hand. Bruce, if you want to speak at all. Uh, unmute yourself. Um, and so, and, and also just to add to what I had started in the beginning saying about Alex and, um, and um, Jonathan? no, um, Jonathan Key, sorry, uh, from EDP um, that are working on thinking about how we can help villages. Um, and they're thinking about it, you know, not just for Port Jeff, but I brought them Port Jeff. You know, I brought them the specifics about Port Jeff. They know Port Jeff well. They want to help Port Jeff, but they also are, are are recognizing that these are issues that many villages growing downtowns um, have struggled with in the past and will struggle with again once you know COVID really um, as we as we dig our way out of it. Um, and so you know, now is the time to be thinking about this. And and uh, if we get infrastructure dollars, if we get economic development dollars, you know, um, this is, if we can find ways that we can help multiple villages with ideas or with a, a, grant, a special grant to help this, you know, the, um, as much as I, I'm, I'm thankful we were able to support the village with Barnum Avenue lot and funds, you know, it, it's still kind of, you know, paving over, mm. you know, adding more spots you know, that's not going to, we're not going to solve this by doing that. Um, there's not enough open space and, so and if, or home or, and or homes to, you know, demolish. Um, and so I think we do have to ha come up with these creative solutions and, and encourage, you know, the walkability. And so the, you know, the sidewalks that are needed, um, in different places there there may be blocks that you know we can help i know along 25a they're you know working on that and and you know there may be other really important blocks that there could be funds for that um i you know i do think dom really hit the nail on the head as um as to one of the and i and i imagine you know, generationally, hopefully that changes that people, um, you know, really enjoy walk, 
walking and people are looking for walkable communities and sure, what, they don't want to get in their car. So I'm hopeful, especially after COVID, you know, when people wanted to get out and walk about. So Sarah, part of what we're seeing is the younger generation, they use Uber and Lyft more. The advantage right. of that is we don't need to park them. They come into town, they party, they drink, they do their thing, they Uber back home. That is a that those numbers are growing, which is extremely helpful for the challenge that we have. But even if we had a grant, let's say we were given a million dollar grant to improve our parking. The only thing we have left, let's say they gave us th that, that money in cash in an envelope in, a, in an attache case. That still wouldn't be enough because the only thing we would be able to do is to build a parking garage and we would need to have $40 million to do a parking garage. Yeah, my understanding is like $35,000 a spot, if I remember correctly. It's, and that's probably 10 year old figure. So, absolutely. So, the challenge with that is let's say we were going to put a garage in. And, the, and we even had ideas about putting the garage I, in. I remember. <laughs> on the tennis courts and put the tennis courts on top of the garage. Yeah, I mean, rooftop deck overlooking the water, you know, whatever. <laughs> and tennis and having fun, all of that in the creativeness of futuristic thinking, man, that took a nosedive because first of all, just the pilings alone that would be needed to secure a, a, a weight like that of where it's located because of how Port Jeff is on. Remember, it was called Drowned Meadow. I do. <laughs> so, and, and we've seen it in recent years. We have seen it drown, for sure. So with that, so we still haven't totally figured it out. We have six acres of land up in the, up in the, 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 you know, by the railroad tracks that is just sitting there. Now, what could that be? Could that be a recreational area eventually where concerts and skate? Well, maybe we could have a zip line down the hill. You know, that's out of the box thinking, and believe it or not, <laughs> that was brought up at once during the meeting. So, <laughs> so I mean, it's it, it really is a challenge. So we really need some really deep, out of the box thinking to find out what we can do. And I believe the answer is, as Kevin had wisely done, shuttle people in and shuttle them out. Yeah. Them in, yeah, I think. And, oh, did you ever touch on the valet? Did you ever? Oh, yeah. You were saying that they thought it was not safe. So we have to find. There were a the few spot things that um, that that they you know that 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 maybe isn't as is it that they're worried they you know they there'd be accidents when they delivered the car back. Is that what? No. One of the things was, believe it or not. And you know, you don't think about this till it happens. As the valets were going to the high school, the car parking lot was next to some residential homes, and that little beep beep to find the car. Oh, that was incredible. Like we never thought that would happen. It wasn't our program, by the way. And I think that was part of the problem too, that it, it was conceived as uh, or perceived to be just for a few restaurants and not the whole town. There was a lot of things going on. Yeah, uh, no, I I think that I just think that we should. I truly think we should rethink, reconsider it, um, in a, in, a, in like with a new, with the, with these, with our team thinking about it. You know, if it's the beep, then maybe they don't do that. If it's the, you know, where it, where, you know, where people are picking it up and getting it. If it's how it's marketed. If it's, you know, because I just, I, I think that's going to be one of the solutions. Maybe not the be all end all, but I think, I. Th like because of what Dom mentioned, that mindset of I don't want to, you know, I don't, I'm not walking a mile, um, you know, a or, mile. Or half mile, whatever. I'm not walking it. Um, 300 feet. We walked it 300 feet and you're at, you know, from CVS. So again, could the valet work? Absolutely. Can you guys look into it and see what we can do? Can we have somebody to have a meeting like this here to discuss the options of what it would be? Absolutely. Could we discuss the cost? and get the cost down that it can be feasible to do? Could we allow the parking committee and, and the village to take charge of it as opposed to the restaurants? They just felt that they wanted to have the ego of saying that they did it right. and it didn't work, it failed. Oh, I'm sorry, I, you know, I don't know all that back politics. So. It was a challenge to kind of get <laughs> that going and, and who wanted <laughs> to have it because I, I want to save the village. So my restaurant's going to do the valet parking all right. and, and they didn't care about anybody else. So. There were a handful of different obstacles that came up because of it. Right. But, so maybe if it's looked at as a as a village, or a you know, um, 
Yeah. Oh, we'll, 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 we'll think about it. Yeah. Sure. They'll, they'll, uh, this is this was just, as I said to yeah. you, Kara. Great. Just, Great. just meant to kind of bring you into the fold and ruin your night. I, I, I'm sorry. Did I say that? No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> um, I rushed. I rushed from where I was to be here. Thank you. I, this is important to me. I, you know, Joe, my my very good friend. I I run with his wife in the mornings, and um, this, you know, and he really just like hammered into my head. And again, maybe he was that restaurant committee, you know, part of it. But how, you know, how how this was still an ongoing problem and and we you know we uh, help please how can your thinking help and then we were thinking about it thinking about it, thinking about it and then it was like COVID, you know and and i apologize for that because it, it was something that i wanted to really work on and the world stopped um Sarah, no no apology necessary the fact that you're here right now with alex and jonathan to be able to assist us to open up some of the the, the wonderful possibilities with every challenge there's got to be change that happens in the word inside the word challenge the first three letters and the last th three letters yeah. is the word change <laughs> we have to accept change in order to face the challenge change in port jeff is difficult because we still have an old mindset of i want this to be the village of what was when i moved here in 1970. we can't convince those minds it's not going to be the village that you moved in it is changing right. so right. if we can get people to accept change bring in some valet that can be done, Port Jefferson valet parking, where maybe there could be a few different locations that people can drop their cars off. Right, well, right. yes, that's my, that, that's what I thought it was. Um, but we should, we should re, you know, absolutely rethink that. Um, I think it's part of the solution for sure. Well, um, we, but, you know, you know let's, let's keep talking and, and I'll, um, Alex and Jonathan and Kevin, you know, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll get back to you when we, if you know what we have and you come to me, if you have things you want me to look into and think about, and I'll try to find out about the governor's 300 million, you said <laughs> infrastructure. I don't know how much is coming to Suffolk or for what I know we were supposed to get water, you know, funds for helping, um, you know, uh, water treatment systems. So that might be something you're thinking of. Um, but I am very hopeful. I have been in talks with Senator Schumer's office. Um, I'm very hopeful that there, you know, now that the um, the rescue plan has passed, they're moving on to infrastructure um, funding um, from the federal government. Um, you know what that'll be, what it'll, you know, what what's on Suffolk's priority list. Um, I'm certainly hopeful. Um, electrification of the Long Island Railroad to Port Jeff is one of them. I'm certainly hopeful, um, you know, an overpass on 347 is another and sewer, you know, sewers. Um, I have, you know, planning that's happened for Port Jeff Station to be sewered, planning, you know, that's could be potential for like to talk at Stony Brook, you know, so those are already things, but certainly roadways and oh, gosh, we need help with our roadways. Um, yeah, we do you know, they're crumbling everywhere. And so it's a shame that you have to, you have to use new money to do what, what old money should have been doing. And that bothers the hell out of me, but I'm hopeful we'll have even more than just paving dollars that we, you know, the overpass 347 over Nichols is like high on my list. Um, and like I said, the electrification to Port Jeff, um, high on the list too. It's, it's, you know, it's a decade away at least even once it's wow. once you know you have it, it takes a long time, but it's a huge expense. But it it's a game changer for sure if it does happen. No doubt. Thank you, thank you, Kara. I don't see anybody raising their hand. Anybody have any last questions, comments for Kara? Um, I I appreciate your time. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for inviting me. Um, I'm I love the village, you know. So um, while I don't live there. You know, my office is there. I'm there all the time and I love it. And, you know, I, I want to be a partner um, as much as I can be. Oh, we really appreciate uh, when that. When you're ready to make the move, we know we can find a <laughs> nice house for you and we'll make that happen so then you can walk to work. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kev. Thank okay, you, Alex, you're for welcome. being here. Thank you. Thank you, Do you thank mind you, if Alex. I go off? I have a, um, oh, no. a dinner, dinner waiting for me. Oh, no, enjoy thank it. You. No, thank, thank you guys you. for your time. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Alex. Yeah, no problem. Happy to be a resource where we can. Thank right. you. Bye now.
Fantastic. Well, it's great that she joined and uh, and is able to kind of see some of the challenges that we have. You know, it's um, it's uh, it's hopeful that if we can get some kind of support like that, you know, we can possibly maybe uh, you know, bring some valley in here that could be you know well managed, and hopefully that could be a solution. Trustee, Trustee Snaden Snayden is joining Trustee us. Snayden, what do you think about the, the about bringing valet back? All depends on you know how it's implemented. I know we've had challenges with it in the past. Um, you know, if somebody comes forth with a with a good plan that sounds like it would work, I'm willing to try anything once or twice. <laughs> well, I think I think we, we uh, as a park committee and a village did not handle the first time. And I think uh, if we did this uh, through Port Jeff and Kevin was able to, to, to steamroll this, I think that would be much, a much healthier plan for us to try it again mm -hmm. under the auspices of the village. Very good. Um, I'd like to give uh, Art some time, but I'm going to ask Art to call in. It's, a, it's just 100% better. Yeah. And unmute now, if you could. Unmute we now. Yeah, we can't hear you. I'm Art. having issues with the number I dialed. W with the number that I sent? Uh, it's what I used last month. That's no longer applicable? That's no, a different number. Um, you, you dialed the number 929-205-6099? Correct. And no good? I, I guess the code I submitted didn't the work. The idea, the, the ID code is eight four zero. That's right. Seven nine seven four five two three three. Did you get that? Yeah, I'll try it again. All right, that's, uh, that that got Bruce in. Okay, uh, so let Art try that in the background. Uh, you know, it feels like we just met, so there's not a lot more to report. Uh, so I'm gonna throw it out to whoever has something to talk about. Are we going to have a, a ribbon cutting ceremony for Barnum? We are. I'm going to leave that up to Nicole to contact Suffolk County to make that happen. Okay. It'll probably be in April, late April. Great. Great, great. Uh, Bruce, if you know what to do if you want to say something. You're going to have to unmute. I can't control you because you're on the phone. And all right, fantastic. So uh, should see Art calling through very soon. Art, uh, when you get back to Port Jeff, let's meet and look at that computer that you have and see if we can um, do one of two things, fix the speaker so you can be heard or take a freaking hammer to it. No, oh, he needs an external mic. That's yeah. all. Yeah, he needs an external mic. <laughs> All right. So let me, while, while uh, Art's trying to get in, uh, you know, I'll just go over my updates. They're not much different, but I did have a, a caveat or a question for this committee. Uh, we are opening April 1st, managed parking. We will watch uh, for what it's worth to see when and if Brookhaven goes to managed parking across the street. We are Thursday through Sunday at this point, 12 noon to 11 p.m. Same rates, same time, same days as last year. Um, again, opening April 1st. Uh, some of the new things that are happening are new two-hour parking spots uh, that will happen adjacent to buildings, very prime spots. We'll start with a beta program in front of Port Jeff Lobster House. Great. Because we had found, I, we all went over this last meeting, that uh, people are taking advantage of those spots. Uh, so we will have... Um, new signs that will indicate please uh, only park here for two hours and they'll be demarked by these pretty cool uh yellow which i have a picture of some here uh give you just a better idea i'll share this it'll it'll look something like this if i can get this a little bigger So the, it'll be really demarked between the spaces, nice and yellow with a sign with a scan code right here. So you could park here. Can you see my cursor? Yes, beautiful. You can move into lot 32, literally lift up your phone and shoot the sign from inside the car and park. I mean, that it's incredibly easy. Um, 
and this will be our beta spots right here, uh, like eight spaces. There's the other five, one, two, three, four, five. You'll see them right in between here. So it'll be quite convenient. And this will be monitored and enforced by a dedicated person. So that truly two hours, which is definitely enough time, by the way, to eat dinner right there locally. And at the same time, allows movement of cars. So I think everybody really likes this idea. Good stuff. Yeah. Um, the other update I have here is on Barnum. Everybody's aware that we're going to have this breakthrough car counting system. This will be the last sign that I commissioned to put up because I want to make sure that this, this is pretty intricate. So that'll be an April project to make that happen. So that's pretty cool. But right now at Barnum, you'll see these nifty signs facing both sides of the lamppost. Now, I think this is a breakthrough for us as well. This is, uh, we're going to be incentivizing employees to park here at no charge, free parking, seven days a week. We're going to ask them to check in with an app. There'll be no cost, but we'll be able to track who's parking here. And of course, instead of the words, no overnight parking, we decided 1 a.m. to 6 a.m. There will be no parking or you will be ticketed because we're able to control and enforce that. So I'm excited about that. Um, this is sort of off parking, but I'm going to report it anyway. Trustee Snaden is well aware of this. Uh, we have these new signs. I think they look great and they, they're catchy um, to be able to report any trouble. Beautiful. Uh, Beautiful. And we could put these on existing rail posts. So we're and happy. We decide, did we decide not to put them on the Dickens? Uh, uh, line yes. Posts? Yes. Yes, we did. Okay. Uh, I'm having issues uh, trying to unmute my phone. Is there a specific number I have to push? Uh, I see you coming in. So I'm going to put you in now. Okay. Art, then what <laughs> you'll do is I muted, I muted your video. So you're now on. If you could just count to five with your phone, I want to make sure I can hear you. Okay. Much hey. better. Much better. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, let me turn down so we don't get an echo. There we go. Uh, my thoughts that I wanted to discuss tonight, uh, you know, it's funny that we have the same problem for 40 years in parking here. But this is not static. There are so many things that are changing. It's almost mind boggling. Uh, and things that I never thought possible, Kevin having so many people actually come on board with the app. And I know we have a target of 2023. I never thought that was possible. But with regard to cruising for parking, which is part of parking, it's part of the parking experience, I have been, you know, looking at the rollout of electric vehicles, which is astounding now because basically the switch is flipped and it's full steam ahead. We're going to have so many more vehicles coming out. It's going to just be beyond our expectations. My concern is vehicles that have the ability to accelerate very quickly. I mentioned one example at the last meeting of the uh, Mach-E Mustang that will be introduced later this year that can do zero to 60 in three and a half seconds. Uh, I know, Kevin, you and I both had muscle cars in our lives. Uh, it's so and those funny. Cars, yeah, you say that. Those, I just, I just want to say uh, that you're bringing this up. It's so funny. I had a 69 Firebird. I'm going to find a picture. I'll show you guys uh, next time. <laughs> Yes, I had a 70 Chevelle Super Sport with a 454, and I know my best zero to 60 was like 5.2 seconds. Uh, so you can have some of the most powerful muscle cars being superseded today by electric vehicles. And one of the vehicles that I was fascinated by that's out this year as well is an Audi uh, SUV that's 5,700 pounds. But effectively, it has 400 horsepower and it can do zero to 60 in five and a half seconds. It's like performing like a muscle car, except it's a ton heavier. So I guess my point is, 
if we have any issues of public safety that we were concerned about, we should basically address them now before these vehicles hit the streets and they do so without making any sound. But there's an interesting aside because I was looking at some of the promos for the Mustang and they suggested they're going to try to accompany some sound with it artificially, like a soundtrack. So that even though your engine doesn't make the standard uh, uh, Mustang sound from yesteryear, they'll have some sort of sound created to give you that good feel from past history. But they didn't define whether that sound will be within the passenger compartment or in the engine compartment for other people in the community to hear. So are we going to know it's coming or not? That's one of the, the circumstances I'm concerned about. And uh, yes, uh, I think we need to hash out better some of my thoughts that I had about uh, a one-way Arden last week, because I realized there are various permutations. You can just say, leave it as it is, go one direction, go the other direction, change East Main Street as well, change no right-hand turn or left-hand turn. There are many options that we re really need to hash out if we're going to go ahead with that as a plan. And my thinking, actually, Kevin, was the way this had been done in the past, if I had made a suggestion, we as a parking committee would discuss it, would hash it out, and at some point, usually it would be Trustee Snaden who would present this to the board, not necessarily myself. And maybe that's, should we honor the past and go that route? Uh, I just don't want to address this in a, uh, I want to do this quickly to try to resolve if we can uh, thwart a possible public safety issue. Well, uh, Art, 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 if I can say something, I think a part of the challenge we have here is that from a parking committee, we are, uh, we're not, we're only a, uh, we're not a codified organization. So what you're asking is more of a safety issue. It's not necessarily a parking issue. So I think that has to go to whoever the trustee is that deals with code and safety as opposed to parking. Now, that, that, so I, I, th I think we have to try to find the right way to get your message across. Yeah, I, I, th right. I think he brought that out, I think. Uh, and Trustee Snaden, if she's in the background, could comment on that. But I think, I think that's very viable. I think this yeah. does have to... I'm Go sorry, ahead. I'm I'm here. Um, I, I'm also the liaison to code and public safety. So yeah, definitely a conversation. Um, you know, and I'm I'm willing to discuss that further at any point. So then Kathy, and okay. if you can, get, you can get together with Art and Art, you discuss, you know, a, a plan of what you want to present. Trustee Snaden will present it and we'll see if we can move that forward on their agenda as opposed to uh, you know, confusing matters at all. And we want to get your point delivered as soon as possible. I just wanted to give you an aside from what I spoke about last month, uh, about when I, in, in 1982, a mile from my house where I lived in Garden City, the mm -hmm. train incident. Mm -hmm. I really didn't understand until I went back a couple of weeks thereafter what a case study that is. Basically, for more than a few years, the National Transportation Safety Board identified that exact location as the most hazardous railroad crossing in the United States. So it was a profoundly dangerous situation. It took 16 years to resolve because it required $85 million. And what happened was you had four entities. You had Nassau County, you had the MTA, you had New York State Department of Transportation, then you had a federal entity. So you had four different people trying to, uh, I don't know if it was an issue of too many cooks spoil the broth, but there was so much collaboration that was re required, it took forever. So I, I guess in terms of our village, uh, we have better mechanisms to collaborate. And I'm hopeful that once we discuss this issue and, and hash out the ideas, we can actually come with a, with a good solution and actually uh, accomplish something that we can really be proud of. Fantastic, fantastic, great points, great points. I look forward to you 
you know, meeting with um, Kathy Ann, Trustee Snaden, and uh, and putting this forward. Great. Good stuff. Okay. Uh, I'm going to jot off a letter right after we get up this meeting to Nicole so she can start the ball, ball rolling on that um, that uh, grand that official grand opening of the of the lot press conference, if you will, uh, whenever that may happen, and the parking committee will know about that. And that's it for for now. Uh, next two weeks for me are extremely busy, so I'll, I'll stay in touch. Really, 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 really busy. Fantastic, Kevin. And and the, the meters go on when April first. Okay, so April 1st, that'll begin the insanity of, uh, of what we'll step into. So as you get prepared for that and what it is, you know, it'll be interesting to see what that first month's, you know, uh, meter, uh, you know, uh, income will be to see how the village is coming back from all this COVID stuff. So this will be some, some well, I can guarantee I can guarantee it'll be more than April of last year. <laughs> Those of you that remember, we didn't open until July 1st. So absolutely. Man. I like Fantastic. it. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so, so much. Good night, everyone. Good night, guys.